Since it first hit the air in 1975, Saturday Night Live has been known for pushing the comedic envelope. However, there have been some sketches that went way over the top. Riffing on everything from religion to politics, here are some of the most controversial SNL sketches of all time. The 1990 sketch Chippendale's Audition is just one of the many moments that has made Chris Farley a household name even decades after his death. Featuring a svelte Patrick Swayze pitted against a heavyset Farley during an erotic dancer audition, the sketch highlighted Farley's signature physical comedy style. It's still one of the most popular SNL sketches of all time. While the sketch was popular with audiences, it caused controversy amongst Farley's co-workers at Saturday Night Live. In Farley's biography, The Chris Farley Show, Chris Rock claims that he actually hated the sketch. He said, a more mentally together Chris Farley wouldn't have done it. Bob Odenkirk wished Farley never would have done the sketch and couldn't believe anyone liked it enough to put it on the show. Writer Robert Smigel, however, felt the sketch didn't deserve all the hate. He told Howard Stern that it was very empowering for some audience members to see Farley's performance. Like, look at this guy go and be completely proud of, you know, unashamed and just going yeah. for it. Rock wholeheartedly disagrees with this perspective. He elaborated, as funny as that sketch was and as many accolades as he got for it, it's one of the things that killed him. It really is. Something happened right then. How do you explain the cultural phenomenon that was Tim Tebow to folks who didn't experience it? Basically, he was known for two things, playing football and a serious devotion to his religion, which makes a perfect combination for a controversial SNL sketch. In Jesus Visits Tim Tebow and the Denver Broncos, Jason Sudeikis plays a laid-back Jesus Christ who is exhausted with helping the Broncos win game after game. It's interfering with his work attending other events where he's frequently called up, like the Country Music Awards and beauty pageants. By the end of the sketch, Christ exits with a plea for Tebow to take it down a notch with his love of Jesus, a plot point that some Christians did not appreciate. Famous televangelist Pat Robertson claimed the sketch was an example of anti-Christian bigotry. Robertson wasn't alone in his feelings. Fox News' Bob Beckel called the sketch despicable for portraying Christianity in a negative light. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm forgiven. <laughs> Fred Armisen's Weekend Update characters include fan favorites like political comedian Nicholas Fane and kitschy folk singer Garth. He tends to get away with pretty much anything. But when Armisen tried his hand at mimicking David Patterson, then governor of New York State, the response wasn't so charitable. Armisen portrayed Patterson, who is blind, as a bumbling man who didn't know where he was on stage and committed gaffes like holding charts upside down. Many viewers, including the governor, were not impressed with Armisen's continued mockery of Patterson's disability. His office released a statement saying, The sketch unfortunately chose to ridicule people with physical disabilities and imply that disabled people are incapable of having jobs with serious responsibilities. The recurring bit came to an end when Patterson himself appeared alongside Armisen on Weekend Update. The governor declared that, quote, jokes that degrade people just for their disabilities are sophomoric and stupid which received a round of applause from the audience. The cast of Weekend Update also apologized to him. Patterson, it seems, took the previous sketches in stride and even had a chance to add a few zingers of his own. You know, working in Albany is a lot like watching Saturday Night Live. There's a lot of characters, it's funny for 10 minutes, and then you just want it to go away. <laughs> During the 2015 Super Bowl, Toyota released a tearjerker of an ad that showed a father dropping his daughter off to join the army. The writing staff at SNL clearly found the ad over the top and wrote a spoof starring that week's host, Dakota Johnson. In SNL's version of the commercial, Johnson and Taryn Killam play a father and daughter sharing an emotional moment outside of an official-looking building. When the time comes for Johnson to leave the car, however, she doesn't walk in to join the army. Instead, a truck with ISIS members drives in to pick her up. Take care of her. Death to America. At the time, as reported by ABC News, there were several women from the West who were leaving their home countries to join the terrorist group. The commercial parody took aim at both the women joining ISIS and the overly emotional tone of the original Toyota commercial. But for many folks, the joke just didn't land. The New York Post compiled examples of the outrage and support expressed on Twitter. Some viewers called it the most unfunny SNL sketch ever, while another Twitter user said, sorry, but no laughing matter. Ever. 
Some people, however, loved the parody. As one tweet said of ISIS, there's no group more deserving of ridicule. In 2000, SNL cast member Jimmy Fallon regrettably donned blackface in an impersonation of Chris Rock. The sketch was largely forgotten for two decades, and it doesn't exist on SNL's official YouTube account. When a clip resurfaced on social media, Fallon issued a public apology on The Tonight Show. I'm horrified, and I'm sorry, and I'm embarrassed. Later in the show, Fallon spoke with NAACP President Derek Johnson about the issue of racism in America. In response to the scandal, Rock told the New York Times, I'm friends with Jimmy. Jimmy's a great guy. And he didn't mean anything. A lot of people want to say intention doesn't matter, but it does. And I don't think Jimmy Fallon intended to hurt me. And he didn't. SNL is known for its parody trailers of box office hits, and the popular film Django Unchained was no exception. The sketch, titled Jesus Uncrossed, portrayed the Prince of Peace taking his revenge on the Roman officials that had him crucified in a dramatic, action-filled trailer that featured swords, guns, and lots of blood. Predictably, the sketch enraged some conservative Christians. One think piece posted on Before It's News exclaimed, This pretend movie trailer is not in the least way funny. It is frankly sick. It is pure, adulterated blasphemy of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Savior of mankind. The sketch also angered the Council on American-Islamic Relations. According to The Atlantic, the Council called the sketch extremely offensive to Muslims and to all those who believe in his message. Such a distasteful portrayal of a religious figure revered by billions of Muslims and Christians worldwide crosses the comedic line. The folks at SNL likely expected the backlash, and they didn't ask for forgiveness. No more Mr. Nice Jesus. <laughs> The SNL we know today isn't exactly known for its edgy, dark comedy. Sure, we get the occasional sketch featuring a child-molesting robot, but for the most part, sketches that make people gasp are more commonly seen on shows like The Eric Andre Show. But this was 1975, when SNL was a new kind of sketch program that pushed the boundaries established by more mainstream programs. One of the most infamous sketches out of season one was Word Association, in which Chevy Chase and Richard Pryor toss racist slurs back and forth until Chase eventually blurts out the N-word, much to Pryor's horror, the sketch still both shocks viewers and receives accolades today. Rolling Stone magazine claimed that the sketch was the last time a white guy said the N-word on TV and actually diffused racial tensions rather than ignited them. At the time, the bit was unlike anything ever aired on network television. The sketch was written by Pryor's writing partner, Paul Mooney. In his memoir, Black is the New White, Mooney said the sketch was inspired by his own experience as a black man being interviewed by white network executives. Mooney called Word Association the easiest sketch he'd ever written. According to The Economist, the Federal Communications Commission determined that fleeting uses of words such as penis do not, quote, render the material patently offensive under contemporary community standards for the broadcast medium. SNL took full advantage of that fact in their 1988 nude beach sketch, where the word is uttered not once, not twice, but 42 times. The sketch portrays Matthew Broderick attending a nude beach for the first time. He's self-conscious, but according to his friend, played by Dana Carvey, he's got nothing to worry about since everyone goes there to relax. Of course, Broderick's fears are immediately confirmed when a group of men approach Broderick and make comments about his body. While the sketch was a clever way to dance around what was acceptable to say on network television, it also managed to offend plenty of people. The bit, which was co-written by Conan O'Brien, received over 40,000 letters of complaint in an enormous display of public outrage. We'd like to say times have changed, but all evidence leads us to believe the sketch would receive just as much hate if it aired in the 2020s. Although the FCC's censorship of profanity has loosened over the years, SNL still refuses to get too profane. This means that using some words, especially the F word, can get you banned from SNL for life. And while Jenny Slate wasn't the first SNL cast member to utter the F-bomb, she had the misfortune of slipping the word into a phrase during her very first sketch on the legendary show. While Slate's use of the word was a complete accident, viewers still speculated that the incident was the reason she only lasted one season as a cast member. In an interview with InStyle, Slate refuted that claim, saying that profanity was not the reason she was fired from the show. I didn't do a good job. I didn't click. All I know is, it didn't work for me, and I got fired. Fallen star Louis C.K. was on top of the world in 2015, 
Between his popular stand-up specials and hit TV show Louie, it seemed that the comedian could get away with nearly anything. CK was known for twisting absurd and disgusting topics into palatable observations. But this method didn't quite work during CK's SNL opening monologue. The comedian took his hosting gig as an opportunity to express his disappointment that the child molester who lived in his childhood neighborhood didn't like him. He then quipped that for a pedophile, the horrifying act of molesting a child must be amazing for them to risk so much. Child molesters are very tenacious people. They love molesting childs. It's crazy. It's like their favorite thing. While some people, like radio host O.B. Hughes, thought the set was fantastic, most folks weren't so charitable about CK's attempt to humanize child molesters. Hollywood Reporter compiled a list of reactions tweeted by viewers. One person wrote, That was the unfunniest, most offensive SNL monologue I've ever seen. Another Twitter user said, Those defending the Louis C.K. monologue are either predators themselves or victims of sexual abuse. My heart aches for humanity. In 2009, Tiger Woods made headlines when he crashed his car after his wife, Ela Nordegren, broke his rear windows with a golf club. Woods was the kind of athlete whose superstardom eclipsed the sport of golf. Everyone, including folks whose knowledge of the game was limited to putt-putt, could recognize Woods' face on a box of Wheaties. When news of the accident broke, outlets quickly speculated that the incident was an act of domestic violence on Nordegren's part, after she discovered that Woods was cheating. The incident temporarily ended Woods' career and inspired a controversial SNL sketch that made light of domestic violence. In the sketch, CNN is covering a press conference where Woods, played by Kenan Thompson, discusses his personal failings and infidelities. Blake Lively portrays his wife, and the running gag is that she's physically assaulting him every time that CNN cuts away from a live shot of the couple. There is no other woman for me. <laughs> oh. Who's that? Huh? What? According to the New York Times, viewers erupted with criticism online. In addition to obvious reasons, the segment was also considered to be in especially bad taste as it was aired just months after Chris Brown reportedly assaulted Rihanna, who was the musical guest on the same night that the Tiger Woods sketch aired. If you or someone you know is struggling with domestic abuse, please call or chat online with the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233.